live from downtown Honolulu, it's The Moving Body with your host, Dr. Bernie Portner of Portner Orthopedics, recognized as Hawaii's leading sports medicine and orthopedic specialist. And now, here's your host, Dr. Bernie Portner. Good morning, Hawaii, and welcome again to The Moving Body. My name is Dr. Bernie Portner, your host today and every Saturday at this time to take your calls and at least try to answer your questions regarding arm, leg, neck, or back pain. We also talk about fitness, uh, exercise, sports injuries, um, sometimes general health and medicine if you need to. But uh, my specialty is uh, orthopedic medicine, that is non-surgical or conservative orthopedics. I practice uh, this specialty in Honolulu over on P.E. Koi Street. And um, this show is very much a, a small window um, look into my uh, work-a-day week where uh, the same types of questions that you'll hear today, this morning, are those that also go on, these same conversations go on uh, in the office. So you get to listen a little bit in to what it's like to come see me or another doctor in my field, the types of questions we ask, the uh <clears throat> types of advice that we give, and uh, so on. The number here, 521-8383. Star, uh, there's no more star 83, I understand, is there? I don't think. There might still be. There may still be star 83 on a cell, possible. I had. There's a nasty rumor going around that that's not going to happen. And uh, we're going to try that out. And let's see, uh, Neighbor Island listeners, one triple eight five six five eight three eight three. I heard it doesn't work, also, uh, but the toll free number does. One triple eight five six five eight three eight three. So let's get the uh, show rolling. I'm waiting for my first call. While I'm doing so, I want to talk a little bit about um, osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a diagnosis made by X-ray where uh, you look at a, uh, you take an x-ray of a painful joint and you see that not only is the joint affected, narrowed, but the bone itself has certain changes, spurring, little holes called cysts, uh, little areas of uh, darkening uh, or thickening of the bone called sclerosis. So uh, in osteoarthritis, the osteum, the bone, and the joint, the arthro, are both affected. And it's the most common type of arthritis. It uh, very much uh, affects, most commonly, the knees, the hips, the hands, the thumb, uh, the fingers, uh, the, f the uh, spine. And uh, this condition is uh, sometimes seen on x-ray, but not causing any problems. So we take an x-ray of somebody for another reason, and we happen to notice by the way, there's a lot of degenerative arthritis or osteoarthritis changes in your fill-in-the-blank, in your knee, let's say. And the patient says, well, geez, I don't know. It doesn't hurt. So uh, you can have these various osteoarthritic changes on x-ray without symptoms. And then, of course, if you're thinking uh, a little bit uh, quicker than some this early hour, You'll ask, well, then, if somebody does have pain in the, let's talk about the knee, and you take an x-ray and it shows these x-ray changes, which are sometimes without symptoms, how do you know that these x-ray changes are in any way related to the patient's current painful symptoms? Okay, you follow me? So sometimes people will have pain in the knee. You take an x-ray. The x-ray shows osteoarthritis. The doctor points to it and says, aha, look at this. you got osteoarthritis. A week later, after rest and ice and ibuprofen and so on, uh, your pain is completely gone. Now, uh, your x-ray hasn't changed a bit. If anything, it's, it's worse in time. But uh, over a week, it hasn't changed a bit. So uh, if, if you go back to the doctor and you say, you know, my knee is all better, what does my x-ray look like? And, of course, he wouldn't repeat the x-ray, but in case uh, one did, it would look the same. And you would say, geez, well, maybe those x-ray changes weren't in any way related to my pain. Maybe I had a pain related to something that isn't seen on x-ray. Maybe a ligament was in, in, injured. We don't see that on x-ray. Maybe 
uh, a tendon was injured. We don't see that on x-ray. Maybe there was a referred pain to my knee from someplace else. We wouldn't see that on x-ray. So whenever um, you're given a diagnosis of osteoarthritis or what's sometimes called degenerative arthritis, one has to always question that because um, we know that people have those x-ray changes without pain. And we know that some people with pain and those x-ray changes get better, although the x-rays don't. So um, if you follow this, I don't know how clear I'm being. It's a little bit early to be clear. But um, so anyway, osteoarthritis, it's seen on x-ray. It's very, very common. And it uh, leads sometimes at the end stage to surgery where the joint is actually replaced. We're talking about bionic joints where you can uh, wear out a hip and limp for years with pain with every step. Finally, cons consent to having your hip replaced and that evening walk pain-free for the first time. So it's, it can be very dramatic and miraculous. So while I'm not a surgeon and I practice orthopedic medicine, which is uh, the diagnosis of orthopedic problems that don't require surgery, there are times when surgery is required. And end-stage osteoarthritis in certain joints is one of them. In the hips, you can really improve your life. In the uh, knees, uh, it can really make a huge difference. And elsewhere, it's not as common to uh, replace joints. Shoulders sometimes, ankles sometimes. Uh, but those are not as perfected. Uh, the thumb joint is sometimes uh, osteoarthritic and replaced. The big toe becomes osteoarthritic and is sometimes uh, replaced. Um, and uh, ah, looking for medicine recommendation. Uh, so sometimes joints are replaced. In the toe, I started to say sometimes uh, the... Uh, joint is not replaced, it's fused, and that means it won't bend anymore, and uh, if it won't bend, uh, it won't cause pain. Of course, it won't work as well. The number here, 521-8383, uh, I, I don't know if star 83 works anymore. Some say yes, some say no. And uh, uh, Neighbor Island listeners have a break, though, toll-free, 888 565 Eighty-three, eighty-three. We're looking for our first call, 521 8383 For those of you too shy to call, and there may be those, and I don't blame you, uh, but you're having a pain in your back or your neck or your knee or your hip or your arm or your leg, uh, you can call the office at 596-7300 and get an appointment and be seen. Um uh, in person, privately. You don't have to tell the thousands of listeners your personal problems. But in fact, it's kind of fun. Uh huh. So, Star 83, here's the latest. Star, latest, the latest scoop. Star 83 works with certain cell carriers, but not all. So, if you're driving carefully and you have a question, you can uh, dial Star 83 and see if it works. It used to. Uh, otherwise, 521-8383. So we began to talk about osteoarthritis, the most common cause of arthritis or inflammation of a joint, and uh, commonly affects the knees, hips, hands, feet, and uh, spine. And a treatment, short of surgery, end stage, you get the joint replaced or fused. But uh, before that, there's ways to protect your joint so that it doesn't happen or that if it's happening, it happens slowly. Uh, there's uh, medications that are sometimes useful. There's injections that can be done. There's exercises that can help. There's braces and various things to also improve the situation. So osteoarthritis has an array of treatments, um, and uh, it doesn't always need to win. It can sometimes, you can beat it. So uh, we can take more questions about osteoarthritis. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention for the knee uh, probably the most common area of osteoarthritis. There's a, a medication called Synbisc. That's the brand name. 
And Synvisc is a thick, uh, kind of a gooey, kind of uh, gelatinous substance that can be injected into the knee joint quite simply and uh, provide an, a, a, a sort of work as an artificial lubricant uh, for those that really are missing the cartilage of their knee. So uh, Synvisc, and there's other products like it, they actually get it from the protein that they extract from the combs of roosters, I think it is. And um, I've had some very good success with that. It doesn't last forever, but it can give you 6 to 12 months of pretty free, pretty pain-free walking. Let's see. Andy, go ahead. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Hey, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, I got a quick question regarding posture-wise. Um, I have a brand-new car, and I have a power, it has power seats. I prefer to ride the car with the the backrest a little bit tilted back, but I understand you say the best posture is to have the seat straight up. Is that correct? I never said that. I okay. never said that. Okay. The thing okay. about uh, the thing about car seats or seats in general is uh, number one: when you sit, you lose the curve in your lower back, that sway back, that what's called lordosis. And it's very nice uh, if you have in your car seat, a lot of car, uh, good car seats have uh, devices uh, called a lumbar support that will push your back forward towards your tummy. Uh, and that uh, curve is supposed to be just above the belt line. And, uh, so, and then if you, your car doesn't have that, you can put a pillow there. If you uh, are having back pain, uh, sometimes reclining the backrest a little bit backwards is, in fact, very more, much more comfortable. Uh, the one thing about reclining your backrest uh, uh, backwards is that uh, it throws your neck then has to bend forward in order to look out the window. And that's not the best of all postures. But, uh, no, you can recline your backrest a little bit. It's, it takes some pressure off the disc. And as long as you can see over the steering wheel and not get a neck ache, I think that's fine. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Thanks for the call. 521-8383, star 83 on most of your cell phones. And Neighbor Island listeners, 1-888-565-8383. Johnny, go ahead. You're on the air. Thanks hey, hello, Doctor. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, I have a, I don't know, I, I, I went to my regular doctor on this. And uh, and I thought about the same thing. There's a there's something a pinch nerve around my neck, around my left side of the neck, and all I'm taking is a, a hot water, you know, up to the ground, and so to sleep. But it, it, it still comes back here. Yeah. Uh, is there anything I can do? Yes. Um, I don't know what your what the cause of your what you call pinch nerves are in your neck, but uh, it's a very common complaint. Oh. And uh, and we can usually figure out why you're having this. And uh, when once we know why, then we can recommend treatment. Sometimes we don't figure out why, but we can still try certain treatments like traction, mobilization, and physical therapy. There's plenty of things to be tried. And unfortunately, uh, while I, I, I don't want you to think I don't respect uh, general doctors, but unfortunately most general doctors are not that familiar or good at taking care of pinched nerves in the neck. They just sort of think you got to live with it, that it's your age, you just take these pills, put some heat on it, and forget about it. When, in fact, there are plenty of very good treatments that can be successful, like traction, I mentioned, other forms of physical therapies, and sometimes even injections. So ask your doctor uh, to maybe refer you to a specialist, or else, uh, if you like, at the end of the show, they'll announce my uh, number at the on the at the office. What's the what's the what the more regular doctor? You know, you know, he just helped me because I went there for something else. Right, right, right. So, what's the name of a doctor go to? Uh, where, where, where do you live? Are you in town? No. Oh, oh yeah, very close to you. Where yeah, you. Right, right close. You're welcome to come to our office. Yeah, my kiki. Yeah. So. What's the name of a doctor that I go to? An orthopedic specialist? Yes. Oh, I see. All righty. Well, well, this doctor I go to, this orthopedic, he's just plain orthopedic. Everything is celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Ah. Yeah, forget that. Try someone else. Try to come see one of the doctors at my office. 
I see. Alrighty. Uh, if not, uh, it's uh, orthopedic specialist. Eh? Yes. Oh, I see. And uh, for the time being, what can I do this weekend? Uh? Well, have you tried taking some uh, anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen? Oh uh, well, well I have the silver right here, but I don't know if it's good. Uh, have you tried it? Uh, well, not exactly. I mean, you know, I just tried it for, for you know, just for my back. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I can try that for that too. Try it and maybe yeah, it put, put some heat on your neck and then have some therapy this week and see if that helps you. Oh, you mean some of it? No, some physical therapy. Physical therapy? Yeah. Oh, I see. So, in, uh, in other words, uh, the spastic, the orthopedic doctor will, will probably tell me that. Yes. So, uh, in the time being, can I take a silver? Yeah, go ahead. I, I thank you very much, Doctor. All right, thanks yeah. for the call. Yeah, bye-bye. Let's see, who do I take next? One, two, three, which one is next? Numero uno. Marie, go ahead, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, I just had a re- shoulder, shoulder replacement last uh-huh. week. And uh, I find my balance is off. Is that is that normal? Now, what do you what do you mean your balance is off? Well, when I go to get up out of chairs, I don't feel kind of safe doing it. Does the okay. room seem to spin around? No, or no, 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 no. Are you lightheaded? Or like you're gonna faint? No, I just, uh, I just don't feel comfortable. Like my balance is going to be off. Uh huh. And how is your shoulder doing? Are you using the hand and holding things and grabbing things, or are you uh, in a sling? I no, I'm not in a sling. Um, no, I'm using something to stretch, begin to stretch uh-huh. and stretch the arm. I don't know why I don't know why you're feeling uh unsteady uh, like that. It shouldn't be uh yeah. it shouldn't be and this is new for you before the operation you never felt this way? No. Uh huh. Real strange feeling. Of course the arm kind of stays at my side of uh, the yeah. upper arm. Yeah. And so that may be the why I feel like that. It I don't might know. be the mechanics of the arms have a lot to do with our sense of balance. Uh uh-huh. it's so, just a sense of balance. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it's a it's a it's a sense. So uh-huh. maybe uh, give your doctor a call. Ask him if he's ever heard of this before, if he can uh-huh. explain it. But uh-huh. you're you're not having any chest pain, shortness of no, breath, no, 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 no. lightheadedness no, otherwise. No, nothing. You're feeling no. fine otherwise. Yes, I am. You don't no. feel your heart beating funny in your chest or anything like no, that? No, nothing Skipping at all. Skipping beats. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, you had uh, anesthesia. Uh-huh. When you had, were you put under? Were you, were you yes, I general was. anesthesia? And I had a shoulder block as well, and my arm was like a limp dish rag for a while. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> but you can laugh about it now. That's the good news. Well, it was funny laying there looking at that hand that didn't mm-hmm. wasn't attached to you. How's <laughs> the how's the pain level in your shoulder a week after this operation? Not 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 even a week. It was only Wednesday, yeah. and it's not bad at all. Very not good. All. Is it better than it was? Yes. Uh, it's already better than it was. Uh-huh. Well, good for you. Good luck. It doesn't sound terribly serious, but I would talk to your doctor about it. Make sure it is, it's nothing uh, that I'm missing here. No, okay. I thought you might have some idea. But I it's have no idea. No, okay. <laughs> none. Thank you very much. Zippo. Okay, thanks for the call, Mike. <laughs> okay. 521-8383. Loki, go ahead. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Okay. I have, about 10 months ago, I had a, a fourth sense in my lift. Arteries, yeah. and and my arm was kind of um, it's kind of cut, and then about four months I mean four months ago I had another artery uh, I had another stent in my left artery, and now my right arm is hurting. Both arms are hurting. Would that be a side effect it for the stent that it, I have? It's possible. Do you have uh, pain when you try to raise your arm up, like to reach up above your shoulder? Yes. Uh huh. And it's true on both sides? Not as on both sides, yes. Yes. And have you spoken to your surgeon about this, the guy that did the stints? No, I'm going to go in next week. Yeah, ask him about it. I okay. have heard about okay. people getting what's called capsulitis or frozen shoulder after operations for reasons that are hard to explain. But if that's the case and this is early, you make sure you get it treated before it goes on to something more difficult. Okay, thank you very much. All right, good luck to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that's a couple of uh, rare operations. The artificial shoulder doesn't happen every day. And uh, stints in the in the ar- arm blood vessels are also unusual. People develop frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis um, for a variety of reasons, and it's kind of mysterious. We don't know why, but 
Uh, it's characterized by pain in the arm and shoulder with motion. People sometimes even have trouble sleeping on that side if they roll over and try to sleep on that shoulder. And they can't, uh, after a while, the motion becomes so restricted, they can't do things like brush their hair, uh, shower, uh, get dressed normally, and uh, it can be a, a huge problem. The good news is that it's very, very treatable. So, um, uh, and of course, like most of these conditions, the, the earlier we get started in the treatment, the better our chances for success. So it's not the kind of thing you want to just live with and hope it goes away while it gradually worsens. And then patients come in with a, with several months' history of this, and it's much more difficult to get rid of. So uh, if you have a shoulder pain and it doesn't go away shortly, in a few days or a week, it's something to see your doctor about. Make sure you can uh, get it treated early. The number here, 521-8383. Hope you're enjoying the show. My name is Dr. Bernie Portner. I'm broadcasting from Honolulu, where I practice non-surgical orthopedics over on P.E. Koi Street. And um, for those of you who have a problem with your arm, leg, neck, or back, give me a call here, 521-8383, star 83 on most cell phones. And um, for those of you who have these problems but don't want to be on the radio or don't want to drive and talk, I don't blame you, uh, and can't pull over, call the office later, 596-7300. And uh, make an appointment and we can see you properly. Because the advice I give over the phone has to be uh, tempered with uh, a caveat, a warning, that says that I can't really give you advice over the phone. Over the phone because I don't see you. And I try to use your questions uh, to, to take off in a direction to teach the rest of the audience. But what I tell the individual caller is always tempered by the uh, warning that uh, this is not a substitute, of course, for a, 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 a personal visit, okay? So uh, don't think it is. Um, uh, we were talking a little bit about shoulder pain. We had a lady call in that she had osteoarthritis or some sort of arthritis, I assume, of her shoulder so severe that she had to have it replaced with artificial parts, stainless steel, titanium, Special plastics, who knows what they use uh, nowadays. But uh, it's certainly uh, not as good as new, but way better than how it was with the artificial uh, joints. But shoulder pain is very, very common. And only a fraction of a fraction of a percent of patients that have shoulder pain need surgery of any kind, let alone a full replacement of their joint. Uh, most shoulder pains are readily identifiable, diagnosable, and treatable, and curable, or fixable. Uh, in fact, uh, a large percentage of shoulder pain patients don't have anything wrong with their shoulder. What they have is something wrong with their neck, and it refers pain into their shoulder. And some of those patients with, with neck problems causing shoulder pain don't even have neck pain. Some do. Some have both neck pain and shoulder pain, and then it's pretty easy. But those without neck complaints, it's sometimes hard to make the diagnosis of a neck condition causing shoulder pain with a normal shoulder, even though the shoulder hurts. And even when that diagnosis can be made, uh, it's sometimes difficult to convince the patient <laughs> that uh, the pain is one place, but the problem is another. This is called referred pain. And it's very common, and uh, the body can fool you in many ways, and you can have a pain down the back of your leg, not because you have any problem down the back of your leg, but because you have a problem in your back, referring pain down the back of the leg. You can have a pain in your left arm, not because you have a problem in your left arm, but because you're having heart problems, which can refer pain down the arm. You can have pain in your shoulder, this is my point, not because there's anything wrong with the shoulder, but because perhaps there's something wrong with the neck. A pinched nerve in the neck is a very common cause of shoulder pain. So what appears to be true is not always the case. And where pain seems to be coming from can also be deceptive as well. I'm going to take a quick break here. Mandatory news uh, at the bottom of the hour. Don't go away. I'll be back in uh, 90 seconds. You're listening to Dr. Bernie Portner on The Moving Body. Hope you're enjoying the show. 
If you have a problem with your arm, legs, neck, or back and are somewhat afraid or shy, too shy to call, uh, just call my office, 596-7300, and make an appointment to see one of us live and in person. Otherwise, call here at 521-8383, and we'll try to answer your questions. Thanks for listening, and let's get on with the show. Let's see, star 83 on your cell phone, usually, and uh, out of uh, out of towners, uh, neighbor island listeners, one triple eight five six five eight three eight three is the way to go. So the lines are open; they won't be in a little bit. So if you have a uh, orthopedic problem, or a sports injury, or a work-related injury, or a car accident, uh, it's a good time to call. By the way. There was a little victory in the in the le, 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 legislature, uh, the House of Legislation, our state Congress, uh, had the wisdom to override uh, Governor Lingle's uh, veto of a law that said that you can't uh, take away uh, a injured worker's rights to medical care um, based on some recipe cookbook formula. And uh, I'm very, very pleased with that uh, legislation. I send out my thank yous to those uh, legislators, le- legislators who had the wisdom to see uh, the truth of the situation and not be pulled in by the politics strictly. So uh, that's a, a, v- a small victory right now for the time being. I'm sure they'll try again. For the uh, workers of Hawaii who are entitled to uh, medical care for uh, treatment of conditions which occurred at work or as a result of work, let's not give that up. Um, There's a history involved there that I'll get into as time allows. But let's take my next caller, Sid. Sid, go ahead. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, the... uh the uh, right arm, uh, about a week ago I was traveling from Canada down here and from the one terminal to another, it was quite a walk and I just had a carry-on bag, I think I might have had it a little bit over overloaded, I was throwing it from one arm to the other when I was walking. Right. And then the next day, uh, on the, like, the inside of the elbow, it felt as if it was badly bruised. It was a little bit swollen, but that, that has gone down. But I can still feel it. It feels like a bruise. And also, every once in a while, it seems very, very itchy. So I'm just wondering whether, uh, you know, carrying that bag for so long and, uh, as I say, changing it from one arm to another, whether so let me, I pulled let, a ligament or yeah, something. Yeah, possible. Let me get this straight, though. The location of the pain is on the inside point of the elbow? Yeah, yeah. And right. that's a condition, uh, that's an area, if, I, if I'm correct, that's an area uh, that uh, has a tendon there attached that can be torn off the bone partially, and we call that golfer's elbow because oh, golfers yeah. get it a lot. And, yes, you can certainly get it from gripping a heavy bag and swinging it and tossing it. Yeah. So, uh, And the bruised feeling yeah. is quite common. But if you touch it, it's sore. No, 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 I can touch it, but it, it feels itchy once in a while. Well, then, that, I, then I could be mistaken, my first guess. Is there a rash of any kind? No, I don't think there's a rash at all. No, and how, no. long, how long have you had it? Uh, when did I get down here? Is it just, been just about a week. A week. And is it changing, worse? No, 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 I think it's getting, uh, getting less and less. Yeah, just let it go then. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. I expect that's serious. what it was, you know, carrying it. Yeah, I'm pretty long, sure. You know. The itching is intriguing, but as long as it's going away, we'll just let it go. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate your help. You bet, Sid. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for the call. 521-8383. Star 83 on your cell phone. Itching is funny. Sometimes uh, people get a pinched nerve in their back or in their neck, and uh, they get uh, pain in their neck and in their back, or pain down the leg, or uh, sometimes instead of pain, they get numb, um, pins and needles sensation. Sometimes they get like a warm feeling. Sometimes you get a pinched nerve in your neck or your back, and down the arm or leg, you'll feel a creepy, crawly sensation, as if ants or bugs were crawling on your skin. Uh, and sometimes you'll get a pinched nerve in your neck or back, and instead of feeling pain or numbness or creepy crawly things, you'll feel this itch. And it's uh, the people go to the dermatologist with the itch, but there's no rash. And sometimes the dermatologist will send them to me because they're suspicious. And sure enough, it's a pinched nerve. We treat the spine, get the pinched nerve gone, and the itching goes away. 
And uh, that's that. Let's see. Roy, go ahead, Roy. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Yeah, Dr. Palmer. Yes, sir. Uh, I talked to you a couple of times. Yes. How's it going with your case? Okay. I just got my last shot of epidural last month, July the 20th. And is it doing the job at all? Okay. It's slowly. This third one, it, it, I can feel a little difference compared to the first two, yeah? In what way? A good difference? Are you feeling uh, better? But yeah, way be- little, way better. But it's still there's some pain, you know, yet uh-huh. on my leg. So what? Uh-huh. How long does it take before you think that one will, you know, help me? Well, Roy, there's no predicting and there's no promise. The fact that it's way better from your shots yeah. is good news and lucky. And uh, if it doesn't work completely, I I, I wouldn't be surprised. Because you've been having a long time ser- serious problem. Uh-huh. Finally, you consented to these injections. They've helped you a lot, but not a hundred percent. Well, no one's promised a hundred percent. You see, these shots sometimes help not at all. Uh-huh. Sometimes help a little bit. Sometimes they help a medium amount. Sometimes they help a lot, and sometimes they help completely. But I think you're somewhere in the middle there. So. Oh. You mean that that's how uh, it's going to be like that, you you would say? Or well, that I don't know. But uh, it might be that that's as good as it's going to get from these shots. You had three, yeah? Yeah, that's all I can get for a year. No, there's no real strong, fast rule. But usually after three, we don't see further improvement. And if you get too many more, the dose of cortisone can start having an adverse effect, a negative effect. So... We usually, uh, it's arbitrary to say three. Some people get four, and uh, and uh, some people get even more than that. But uh, around town and around the country, they use the magic number three. Uh-huh. Not so much because more than three is so dangerous, but because uh, usually after three, you don't get further benefit from the fourth or fifth, usually. And um, is your... Um, yeah, I got, uh, okay, in July I had two. The first one I had in April, yeah. and it was staggered for a while then. Right. And I got early part of July and the latter part of July. All right. So, uh, and what what I started to ask is this. You say that there's still some residual discomfort. Yes. But what I'm interested in knowing, besides some residual discomfort, because discomfort <clears throat> is never good, but it's sometimes better than it was. So if you were in miserable pain before, and now you're having much less pain, just discomfort, that might be good enough. The question I have is, how are your activities now compared to how, to how they used to be? Oh, yeah, yeah much better. Like, if on a scale of 1 to 10? Yes. I would say I'd be about, i say about between a 4 and a 3 and a 4, like some days. It's funny. You know, certain days, it affects me more. Certain days, uh-huh. I feel better. So, let that? me ask you this, then, a little more specifically. And now, people listening, this is what physiatrists do, by the way. This is what my field is called, physiatry. No one knows the name of that field. Everyone thinks it's psychiatry. But physiatry has to do with function. And I'm about to ask Roy some very important questions. Roy, do you, are you active in sports at all? Uh, not really. And what about before your injury? Were you? Uh, no. Okay. So there's no sports that you used to play that you can't anymore. What about uh, other activities? Uh, I'm a fisherman. I go fishing. And off the shore or in a boat? In a boat. And uh, after your back injury happened, were you able to go fishing? Uh, no, I, ha- I haven't gone It was too painful. Yet. And now that you've had your shots and you're feeling way better, have you been fishing yet? Uh, no, I haven't gone okay. out yet. So fishing is something to look to because maybe you should pursue treatment until you're good enough to go fishing. That's one way to look at it. And what about other activities? Did you used to do anything besides fish? Did you used to like to hike or walk? Oh, uh, well, I just walk for more exercise. Yeah, I do still walk yet. Yeah. Every day I try to walk, yeah. And uh, are you walking with greater ease now than you were before the shot? Oh, yeah. I you know see, that's that. big. That's big, Roy, because yeah. now... Not only are you telling me that you think you're feeling better, but you're also telling me that before the shots, I couldn't hardly walk very well at all. And now I'm walking much easier. Right, right. That tells me that the shots really made a big difference. Yeah, I know what you're you saying. You yeah, what I mean? Helps. 
And any other activities, doing chores around the house? Are you back to, to fixing things up? And... Well, I'm a mechanic, so yeah. I, I try. I can do some stuff, but like... Light yeah. stuff. But yeah. be, before the shots, were you able to do anything at all? I could do, but I was I could I felt more pain, and now I feel a little. I can feel like doing the job with less pain. Uh -huh. Put it that way, yeah. See, so yeah. that too is big. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't tell you that you've had three shots this year, and you can't have another shot until January first, two thousand six. Uh huh. That's not what I would tell you. <laughs> I would tell you that you're better. You've had three shots. Enjoy it. Maybe you think another one would help me some more? It's possible. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, I have to go see my doctor sending me to a neurologist next week Monday. Yeah. Uh yeah, so wait, enjoy the fact that you have at least some improvement. Yeah. Try to improve your function and uh, maybe walk a little bit extra. Do you, you know, like, do you I like was, to swim? Yeah. I have you been swimming? Uh off and on, I swim too. Well, if I were you, man, I would swim every day. Okay, because swimming every day. Is every than day. Why? Because, because, it, because it's not going to hurt your back, uh -huh. and it's going to uh, make you feel good, and it's going to make you uh, uh, healthy, and you're going to move your arms and legs, and you're going to have fun, and it's something, if you're able to do it, and it's not going to hurt your back, I don't uh -huh. think it will, it would then you should do it. Because it would you certainly need, better than walking, you say? Uh, in a way, because number one, it's easier on the back, you know. In the, when you're in the water, the weight of your body is not on the disc, really. Or like Number walking, two, it's more pressure. More, much more pressure when you walk. Number two, it also doesn't only uh, exercise your legs, but it exercises your arms and your legs. Oh, the whole. Yeah, the, the whole, whole back area. Yeah. yeah. So if you like to swim and you're able to swim, and you have the time, are you working full time? Uh, well, no, my doctor gave me, like, a six-hour schedule, yeah. like, a day. So, now it gives you two free hours, you go swim. Yeah, what I was doing, after that, I come home, I do more, like, stretching, like that, you know? Well, very good. Do your stretching exercises, but I want you to maybe start swimming on a regular basis. You know, I was asking him about, should I go to a chiropractor now? I, he I, didn't recommend that, now. I'm not going to recommend that. I don't have a problem with chiropractic. I work with a chiropractor, Dr. Kurabayashi. Yeah. But um, I'm not going to recommend uh, for your particular case chiropractic because I don't know your case. Uh -huh. and you've had some serious shots, and I don't want you to get twisted or manipulated or adjusted and get worse. Which oh, yeah, I see what you mean. So I wouldn't bother with that. Be You can talk to your doctor about it, though. Yeah, I talked to him. He didn't recommend that to yeah, me. Yeah, I think it might not be smart. And then, But uh, talk to him about my idea of swimming every day. Oh, I see. All right? Okay. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for the call. Okay, bye. Very interesting with this, Roy, because we've been hearing from him every couple of few weeks for months. And we had to convince him to get those shots. And now he did, and uh, he's better. And he's asking, but the pain, when will the, all the pain go away? Well, we don't know. It's maybe never. Uh, sometimes in, in this field of medicine, in any field in medicine, any improvement is a is a is a victory, and to uh, to expect full resolution, complete absence of your symptoms with treatment is sometimes a little too much to expect. So it's very frustrating sometimes for me as a doctor. I see a patient a week after I give them a treatment, let's say a shot or certain therapies, and I say, well, how are you doing after this shot? It's a week, been a week. I still have pain. And then I, I'm not sure what that means, so I said, well, okay, so you still have pain, but how is the pain now compared to how the, you had the pain before the shot? I said, oh, it's much better. You know, before it was a nine, now it's a one. But I still have pain. If I wasn't, in, if I wasn't uh, better, you know, if I didn't know better, if someone said I still have pain, I would think I, she still has the same. He still has the same pain. I gave him a shot. A week later, they still have pain, and it sounds like I, it's the same pain, but it's just a little bit left of what used to be. So uh, don't expect complete resolution. Uh, hope for the best, and you can hope for a complete resolution, but. Uh, from a from a doctor with a quarter century of experience. Actually, it's more, but I don't want to sound that old. From a quarter century of experience. <laughs> I'm about to go to my 30th medical school reunion. So, uh, from 30 years of experience, 
I know that small improvements are sometimes big victories. And you have to understand that. So, let's see. 521 8383 star 83 on your cell phone where it's almost always a free call. And, uh, right. And, uh, uh, neighbor island listeners, again, you have a toll free number, 1888 565 I was asked to talk about supplements and vitamins and so on. I'm always asked to talk about this. And here's my feelings. Most people don't really benefit from supplements. And uh, what they're, they're not regulated very well, so it's just food stuff, so there's no drug regulation. People who make claims about these things, that it does this, it does that, don't have to prove it, like, the, like people who sell uh, medications have to prove it. It's just food derivatives, and uh, for the most part, it's charlatanism. It's just people have uh, symptoms and they're desperate to get rid of it. And someone gets on the TV or the radio or an ad in the magazine and says, arthritis, well, take this. This is an instant cure. It promises to cure arthritis. You just take these supplements. And, of course, send me fifty nine ninety five every month and we'll send you a full supply. And uh, forget that. It's just uh, generally, generally not, not true. But people are so desperate for hope so desperate for relief, so desperate for a cure. And if their doctor doesn't give them any satisfaction by saying, ah, it's nothing, the x-ray is normal, ah, it's just your age, just live with it, you know, or here, take these pills, leave me alone, people will, uh, people will seek uh, help elsewhere and fall prey to these unscrupulous uh, charlatans who will uh, say anything just for you to send them their money. So, for the most part, uh, supplements are uh, basically not what they promise to be and are unnecessary. There are some supplements, however, having said that, that seem to uh, show some promise. I do recommend uh, glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate, two supplements for the uh, treatment and uh, perhaps prevention or slowing down of osteoarthritis. But I recommend it not because I've seen hard proof that it works, but because I've seen a little bit of studies that show that it might work, and I've heard many, many, many people swear by it. They said, I was suffering, suffering, suffering. I took these medicines, and now I feel much better. If one person tells me that, I don't think much of it. If three or four people tell me that, you know, I still don't think much of it. If a dozen or two dozen people start to uh, tell me that, uh, it opens my eyes. And if hundreds of... Does this sound like an Arlo Guthrie song? If hundreds of people start telling me, we got a movement here. <laughs> we got a chondroitin sulfate movement. <laughs> Going to have to sit down on the Group W bench here in a minute. So, <laughs> I swear, I don't think one in a hundred people have any idea what I'm talking about. There was a song during uh, the Vietnam War era by Arlo Guthrie called Alice's Restaurant. And it was actually a war protest song. It took the whole side of an album. For those of you who don't know, albums are what we used to use to listen to, me, to listen to music. But you can't hardly find them anymore. And they called them albums. There was just one big record, but they called them albums because before those long-playing records, there used to be 78s, which each record would last about five minutes. And then you'd have to flip on another record, and you'd get it in an album. It would be four or five records just to get through a few songs. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Charlie, go ahead, Charlie. You're yeah. on there. Thanks hey, for coming. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you pretty good. Okay. Uh, in the in the joint, first joint in my finger, yeah. um, I have this uh, hard uh, bubble or ball that uh, has come through, and uh, it's probably, um, oh, Maybe uh, just less than a half inch. I would say uh, the high. first, the first joint, the one closest to the finger. Now, uh, yeah, the first joint, right? Yeah. And yeah, uh, closest to the finger now, right? And how old are you? Seventy-two. And uh, are you? Um, it's just the one finger, or you have them on several fingers? No, just the one finger. And you say a bubble. I mean, when you feel it, does it feel it's like? Hard. A, is it rock hard? Yeah. 
Yeah, is rock it, hard, is yeah. It, is it painful? Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. And can you use your finger okay? Yeah. And, and did it, it doesn't just, hurt only if I bang it or something. Uh, right. But, and did know. it just pop up recently or was it long time coming? Uh, it just kind of, uh, you know, I have to say it popped up, oh, slowly. Slowly. Got bigger and bigger. Yeah, well, if it pops up slowly, it's not popping up. Popping up implies quickly. Oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like toast. The groom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. So I uh, came on slowly. You're and it's, funny this morning. I am. Um, you know, I don't know why. Uh, it's like this every morning. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm happy. Yeah, so, well, uh, 30 years. Huh? Right. So I'm happy even though there's no swell I, and I can't surf. I, I'm still happy. So, uh, and when you bend the joint, move it, open and close it, that doesn't bother you? No. no it doesn't. Only if you bang it does it hurt. Well, if I accidentally, you know, hit it on something, it's yeah, it sensitive. hurts. But, and you know. have you have you talked to your doctor about it? Um, I did. I spoke to. Uh, I happened to see a surgeon one day, and he said it was uh, liquid oh. that came up. Oh, so but, it's not uh, rock hard. Oh, it is. Yeah, well, it is rock hard. It's liquid, but it's rock hard. Well, he said he thought it, it was liquid that comes up from between the joint. Yeah, that's sometimes true, but that's usually. You can feel it. It's more like a water balloon yeah, no, than a bone. A, no, this is like a, well, more like a bone. Okay. Yeah, so uh, chances are it is a bone. That's a very common place to get osteoarthritis mm. and uh, or what we or what could be post-traumatic arthritis. Do you remember when you were younger if you injured that finger?